What's up guys and welcome to episode 8 of Riot Returns and we finally have access to Football Manager 2015, the full version so we can go forward now and go through our season. We're unbeaten since the opening day of the season in the Skybet Championship where our only blemish being the uh, Crystal Palace game at home in the Cap- uh, Capital One Cup which we got knocked out of. Uh, we've got a few tough fixtures coming up. We've got Sheffield Wednesday which we are expected to win but then we have Norwich and Fulham which are going to be over two episodes uh, if we go back here, um, just to give you some insight into what tactics we're going to be using against Sheffield Wednesday, uh, we're going to keep the same side. Uh, Nicky Maynard's going to come on hopefully in the second half if we're struggling. Uh, he's not 100% match fit, uh, even after his two goals. But we have noticed this about Sheffield Wednesday, which I don't usually look at these, but the most common assist type against uh, Sheffield Wednesday has been from crosses, and uh, half of them nearly have come down the uh, right-hand side. So... We're going to try and attack them down the right-hand side. Uh, Shinny's been playing incredibly well this season, so we're going to put that on uh, his shoulders, and if it's not working, we'll swap the... might put the swap right midfield, left midfield instruction on and see how that works. So we're going to do this in the match so it doesn't affect our tactics going forward uh, against other clubs where it might not work as well. So that's our tactic, and uh, I'll see you on the other side of the uh, introduction. So guys, we are here against Sheffield Wednesday at home and just before match we told them to exploit that right flank uh, and see if Andrew Shinney can be the man that can create us a few goals this afternoon. So we're going to start the match and hopefully we'll get a good positive result at home to uh, Sheffield Wednesday and keep this good run of form going. Shinney's got the ball and finds McLeod. He finds Davis, come out, come out to the wide. Oh, nice, and Hancock's put a whip one in, some whip one in, in towards West Thomas, and West Thomas gets us a lead, and the pre-match scout report has proved right, although it's come from the left-hand side, it was a cross that has unlocked the Sheffield Wednesday defence after 20 minutes, and West Thomas gets on the score sheet for that, boys. So we've got into half-time, we've had 60% of possession, but we've only created the one opportunity, the one goal-scoring chance. So I'm going to say we've played well, but there's still room for improvement. We're just going to try and control this game out now and see if we can hopefully double our lead. And all of a sudden, Sheffield Wednesday have found a way to break on Blues and they've come down the right-hand side. Here's Maguire. Chance for him to whip ball in. He finds them to who and it falls to Koke and Koke has equalised. It's 1-1 here and where that's come from, nobody knows. Totally out of the blue for Sheffield Wednesday and they've got back level here. So guys, we're going to make two changes. We're going to bring on Damari Gray for Shinny. Uh, Shinny was playing a six point three and he really wasn't impressing. And uh, although Maynard, uh, no, sorry, and although West Thomas was playing well, we're going to bring on uh, Nicky Maynard. He's got ninety two percent. I think give him half an hour and just tell him to uh, really have a go. Make the difference. He's capable. He made the difference in the last game. I want him to go and prove himself again, and hopefully we'll be able to nick this one. Blues have the ball, Caddis, he finds Maynard, Maynard looking to make a difference, can he whip the ball in? He does, and it bounces around and nearly falls to Damari Gray, but Westwood's going to have a chance to bring it away, and Blues have really kind of wasted an opportunity there, poor ball in from Nick, Mick, there. Nicky Maynard, it'd be helpful if I could say his name, and the ball's cleared up to Hope, and uh, Sheffield Wednesday, they'll be looking to hit on the break, because if they can just get one away, one ball over the top like that sort of thing, and they find hope, and they have hope. Chance for Sheffield Wednesday, and they've gone and won it by the looks of it. Ten minutes to go, and Holm Hope, uh, it looks like he's on loan from Everton, or he's played at Everton recently, has scored on his debut for Sheffield Wednesday. Could he be the hero? Blues looking to stop that uh, really disappointing uh, loss that this would be. Hancock's finds tomorrow again. Can he put a ball in? He does. Lovely ball. Cottrell and he equalises with 10 to go. Really good response from Birmingham and a lovely... Oh, he's offside. Oh, it was a lovely ball from Damari Gray as well. Oh, no. Blues have really got to try and find a goal here. We've got... Seven minutes to go and they have been coming forward. Here's Cottrell again, looking to cause troubles down the right-hand side. They concede quite a few in the last uh, ten minutes, it's been said on the scout report, Sheffield Wednesday. But can they keep a clean sheet? Well, keep a clean sheet coming into the second half. Here's Davis. Davis looking for spearing. Blues working their way in towards the box. Cottrell finds Nicky Maynard. Nicky Maynard and surely now, yes, Nicky Maynard has equalised. Just checking it wasn't offside. And Nicky Maynard has scored three and two off the bench. And he's really turning out to be a Blues hero. 
The game really coming to life in the uh, second half, but it looks like this one's going to end a draw here unless Blues can find something magical with 30 seconds to go. Or they get caught out at the other end. Damari Gray finds a lovely ball to Nicky Maynard and he finds Cottrell and Cottrell's going to get a chance to have a dig. Oh, and he's flown in over in the 92nd minute and there's the full-time whistle, a cracker, which Blues will probably be disappointed not to have won. It's a bit of an unfortunate one, really. We could have had it a lot worse with 10 minutes to go. Sheffield Wednesday scoring. We managed to uh, get an equaliser through Nicky Maynard, which has kept us right at the top of the table there. Uh, seven games played, 14 points, averaging two a game. Um, we've got two half fixtures coming up, so we'd have liked to have got all three from that. And as they say here, we'll be unhappy. We couldn't hold on to the narrow, um, hold on to win narrowly. But we did have a lead and then we ended up 2-1 down. So I suppose you've got to take that uh, 85th minute equaliser from Nicky Maynard. We did have a goal off, uh, ruled out offside as well. So we'll go forward now and we've got two tough games. We'll have one in this episode and then uh, the next episode we'll have another couple. I'm going to try and do uh, two games, an episode sort of thing now. So just to keep you guys interested, a bit quicker episode. So we'll go forward and I'll uh, introduce you to the next match which will be Norwich away. Interesting week in charge of Birmingham City for Gary Rowe. After the game, Stuart Gray said that his Birmingham side did deserve the equaliser. And I do agree with that. We had around about 60% of possession. But then in the pre-match press conference with Norwich, before the Norwich game, uh, ESPN questioned my first two questions were about Norwich. And it just done my head in. It was about them not performing. And then it was about the manager, whoever should be there. And it just said... Like at the end of the day, if we aren't here to speak about Birmingham City, what am I here for? And I left the room. I'm not having it. I don't like ESPN FC, so it's not a major problem. It's Sky Sports. You probably think about it because you don't want that sort of massive news channel going against you. But ESPN, I don't really care about. And I'm more interested in the Norwich game. We've got Nicky Maynard starting his uh, first game for the club, starting his first game for the club. Of course, he's had the last two games. He scored three in two games. And we've also got a welcome back to Clayton Donaldson. He got back from injury, went... Uh, and played for Jamaica. He scored two goals in two appearances. Got injured again after coming back. Never didn't go and play a game after his injury. He's come back now, and we're going to put him on the bench. Uh, Wes Thomas is there as well. He's only got ninety percent fitness, but then Nicky Maynard's only got ninety-one. But I want to get his morale up because I think with him, he's got lowish morale. And we've been playing and scoring. The only reason he can have low morale is because he's not starting games when he feels he deserves to. So here we go. We're going to get into the Mor Norwich. Norwich game and hopefully Nicky Maynard can prove us right again with more goals chance for Norwich to whip ball in from a corner and Graven gets up there Lloyd Doyley with a great header away but Tetty can pull the ball back out wide to Elliot Bennett he can whip a ball in finds Graven at the front post and that's a great block by someone at the front post I think number 5 Lloyd Doyley again great defending Blues coming up against Redmond again a former club uh, one of the first times he's come back to play us so he's going to be a handful we've got to look after so we've got into half-time, a real tough fixture this one, and away at Norwich, I'll be very, very happy if we can get the draw, keep um, keep our unbeaten record going. Sorry I, sorry about the stutter, I saw Mitch Hancock's there on 67% fitness, he looks like he's got um, a little knock, so we're going to have to bring on uh, Paul Robinson, got a bit of experience at our left-back position, which probably isn't going to be the worst thing to have anyway. Um, I'm, I'm Tossing up whether to bring Wes Thomas or Clayton Donaldson on, probably with 20 minutes to go, freshen it up, or both if uh, something happens here. And Elliot Bennett, Elliot Bennett to another Bennett, and Ryan Bennett is. He's scored, but he's offside, which is lucky. Sorry, I never see the offsides, and luckily we've kept it a nil nil, but that's not a good sign that Norwich are threatening so early in the, first, in the second half. So I've made the decision that I'm going to bring Wes Thomas on. Um, Instead of Clayton Donaldson, Clayton Donaldson, say we went 1-0 behind, he'd be the man that would then come on and we'd probably go to more of a 4-4-2 and lose Spearing and put go 4-4-2 here. Um, but we're going to go with uh, Wes Thomas and hope that his pace and fresh fitness can get us a goal and nick us one on the break. We're actually going to have to bring on Clayton Donaldson. Uh, Andrew Shinney's taken a knock with 20 minutes to go, so we're going to have to use our last substitution. We're going to put Clayton Donaldson out on the right-hand side and then, of course, he can move up to striker if we need him so that's going to be the move we're going to make with 20 minutes to go Olsen has a chance for uh, Norwich to come forward he finds Redmond they're going to be looking Blue's got to try and hit him on the break if we're going to send a chance and Robinson finds Cottrell and Blue's can hit them on the break now can Cottrell go beyond his man he can and he finds David Davis one pass could open them up here it does Clayton Donaldson on his return back from 
Injury nearly, nearly wins the game for Blues with four minutes to go. There's still the chance from the corner as Cottrell looks to whip one in. A few big Blues players in there, but it's a shocking ball in. Blues could have lost their chance to win this one. Cuddis has the ball again, finds Donaldson. McLeod, Birmingham have looked a bit better, but they lose possession. Donaldson wins it back. McLeod gets a ball off to Wes Thomas. Go on, Wes, find a run. Can't. Blues just can't lose possession in this midfield because Norwich are very, very dangerous and Redmond is playing in the mid middle of the park now and he's got a chance he can run at someone. Decides to play it out wide to Martin. Blues looking to close down and stop the attack with two minutes to go before full time. Oh, lovely ball from Redmond as well as he finds Olsen. Chance for him to put the ball into the box. It's a dangerous one and it's gone in at the back post. It's a total fluke from Olsen and Birmingham... Oh, I'm really in trouble now with two minutes to go. What a great goal from Olsen if he meant it, but it looks like a total fluke. And Blues are going to come out of this one with nothing unless Cottrell in the last minute can put a decent ball in. No, Ruddy collects it. And this is going to be full time. And Birmingham have got done by a total fluke. How unfortunate for Blues. They're very, very unlucky. We're going to leave the uh, episode here. We're going to just say I'm lucky to the lads because going to be calm and just say uh, not too concerned because we were very very unlucky uh, this is going to be the end of the episode um, we haven't had the greatest of results in the two games we've got one point out of a possible four and it's dropped us down to seventh place now which is unfortunate but at the end of the day we're still up there we're still in and around the right places the right half of the league and we've just got to look to pick our results back up we've got done by a total fluke there so we can't be too unhappy 89th minute as well kicking the teeth but uh, we'll go into the next episode. We've got another two hard fixtures. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave a like, rate, subscribe. And all the comments would be great. If you could write comments, uh, anything you want to see, anything, you know, any suggestions, that will all help me out. Uh, but until then, thank you very much, guys. And I will see you tomorrow for another episode of Route Returns.